This lecture is the second in a three-part series on polysomnography. It is intended for the Niklaus Children Hospital Neurophysiology Fellows. This lecture is about sleep scoring. It will be conducted in a conversational format initially and then in a question and answer format. The conversational section will be brief. Questions regarding scoring in the clinical neurophysiology exam will be presented to you in two forms. They may be presented as a single epoch or as a panel of multiple epochs. When the primary feature of a question is a single epoch, most of the time you will be giving a 30 second segment of a polysomnogram recording with enough epoch defining elements to be able to score the epoch without needing information from a prior or later epochs. As you know, the stage assigned to such an epoch reflects the prevalent sleep stage during the given epoch. So if 40% of an epoch is consistent with a stage N2 and 60% with a stage REM, the whole epoch will be scored as REM. An epoch with such characteristic that, that is, with enough epoch-defining elements to be scored on its own merits, should be referred to as unambiguous. I will give you another example. This is an unambiguous N1 epoch. The first area shaded yellow can be tagged as a, an awake segment. So can be tagged as an awake segment, the segment at the end of the epoch. But the larger segment shaded mag magenta corresponds to N1 and thus should be tagged as N1 So this epoch, since the area tag N1 occupies more time than the area tag W, the epoch should be scored N1 regardless of the stage of the epoch before and the stage of the epoch afterwards. Contrary to the single epoch question, when sufficient ingredient to score an epoch are provided. In the panel question, in most instances, the scoring of the epoch in question requires information from previous or subsequent epochs. For example, epoch 51 consists of low amplitude mic frequency EEG activity, no eye movements, and high chin EMG tone. This constellation of polysomnographic findings can be seen in stages N1 or N2. Thus, this epoch requires information from other epochs to be scored either as N1 or N2. An epoch without enough stage defining elements as epoch 51 in this frame is called ambiguous. The term ambiguous and unambiguous is not used by all nor is it used to mean the same thing by all of those that use it. But during this talk, I will stick to using it 
as I have just mentioned. This epoch should be labeled N2 because the stage before is N2. Standardized scoring of sleep stages in its current form started with Rich Schaffen and Kales in 1968 with the publication of the now famous Atlas. It has gone through multiple changes and revisions And in 2007, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine put out a manual for scoring of sleep and associated events. This manual last revision was in 2017. This new version is called version 2.4. So that is for the conversational segment of this talk and I will move forward with the question and answer section. First question. Inter-reader agreement is 90% using Rich Chaffin and Kale's rules and 95% using the 2007 American Academy of Sleep Medicine Manual for Scoring Sleep and Associated Events Rules A true, B false In a study published in 2013 looking at inter-score agreement It was found that an epoch that the majority of readers labeled as wake time was considered other stages in 15.9% of instances. What most consider N1 was not considered so in 27% of the cases. What most considered N2 was not considered so in 14.8% of cases. What most reader consider N3 was not considered so in 22.6% of the cases. And what most reader involved in this study Consider REM sleep stage was not considered so in 9.5% of the cases. So the answer to this question is false. Next question Sleep slow wave amplitude should be measured over the dash region A central B frontal C parietal D occipital The posterior dominant rhythm referring to any activity regardless of frequency that appears with eye closure in an awake patient during rest and disappears with eye opening is best appreciated in the derivation going from the occipital region to the contralateral mastoid. The posterior dominant rhythm in the adult is in the alpha range, thus called, as you well know, alpha rhythm. But the slower rhythms in children and in non-alpha producing adults with the same characteristics are also best seen in the same region. In the central derivations, we can observe saw tooth waves, vertex waves, and spindles. In the frontal derivations, we 
tend to pick up K-complexes in a slow wave of sleep. Although K-complexes, especially in children, are often best seen in the central region using a central derivation. Slow sleep waves have very specific parameters. They must be from 500 to 2000 milliseconds and their amplitude must be above 75 microvolts or just 75 microvolts. Slow sleep waves are the only scoring element that has an amplitude criteria or requirement. A slow wave seen in patients with encephalopathy cannot be used to be added to the tally of a slow waves of a sleep in an epoch for scoring purposes. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Alpha activity during REM sleep is 1 to 2 Hz faster than the alpha rhythm. A true, B false. In this frame, the arrow is pointing to an example of alpha rhythm. This epoch is consistent with an unambiguous wake stage. The thick arrow in this frame points to another period of alpha rhythm. The thin arrows in the upper part of this frame point to facile movements, muscle contraction, and body movements. These activities, along with reading eye movements, are characteristic of the wake behavior. This epoch, as the one I showed you before, is also consistent with an unambiguous wake stage. This new frame consists of an unambiguous stage REM. In the occipital derivation, but also in other central derivation, most of the ongoing background activity consists of low amplitude that is between 25 and 50 microvolt activity and mixed frequency activity. This activity is in the range of 2 to 7 Hertz. But in some segments of this frame, especially in the occipital derivation, you can also find some alpha activity. The frequency of the alpha activity is slower than the frequency of the alpha rhythm. That is, the frequency of the alpha activity encounter during REM sleep tends to be 1 or 2 Hz slower than the alpha rhythm. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. Which of the following epoch-defining elements has an amplitude criteria? A. Sleep spindle B. K complexes C. Sleep slow waves D. Vertex wave The current recommendation is to measure the amplitude and occupancy of a slow sleep waves using the frontal derivation. Although, as you can see in this frame, the activity looks just as prominent or even more prominent in the central area. Hence, slow waves of sleep are measured peak to peak using the frontal derivation. As we previously mentioned, a slow waves of sleep consist of waves ranging from 500 to 2,000 milliseconds, and their amplitude should be 75 microvolts or more. The presence of this type of waves 
occupying more than 20% of an epoch characterizes a stage non-REM 3. So the answer to this question is C. Which of the following graphemes never warrants a stage change? A. Spindle B. K. Complexes C. Vertex Waves D. Soto Waves Tagging a segment depends on intermittent elements or background predominance. Intermittent elements include K complex with no arousal, spindles, slow eye movements, vertex waves, arousals, chin EMG tone, and rapid eye movements. Background activity predominance include a slow wave of sleep predominance in over 20% of an epoch, low amplitude mixed frequency EEG activity, alpha rhythm in more than 50% of an epoch, sawtooth waves never warrants a change in the scoring or tagging an epoch. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. In non-alpha rhythm producers, once a background activity is considered the weak background activity future reappearance of the same activity should be considered equivalent to the appearance of alpha rhythm in alpha producers. A true, B false. There are two types of people in the world. Alpha producers and alpha not producers. and they or each of them require a different set of scoring rules. If analyzing an epoch in an alpha producer patient at rest with eyes closed, the percentage of alpha determines the sleep stage. If it is over 50%, the epoch should be labeled W. If, on the other hand, the alpha activity occupies less than 50% of the epoch, the epoch cannot be classified W, so it has to be classified as non-REM sleep stage 1, 2, or 3, or it has to be classified as REM stage. Again, when analyzing an, an epoch in alpha producers, and the page is unreadable because more than 50% of the epoch is obscured by artifacts, produced by major body movements, the presence of alpha rhythm, regardless of how little it occupies, warrants the scoring of the epoch W. If no alpha activity is present, the page cannot be scored W, and therefore it has to be either N1, N2, 
in 3 or REM stage. The story is a little bit different in alpha node producers. And the scoring rule for this group is obviously different than the scoring rules that we use for alpha producers. As we previously stated, these different rules that apply to non-alpha producers has to be analyzed epoch by epoch in the same way. So in non-alpha producer patients, address with eyes closed if the percentage of the epoch occupied by the posterior dominant rhythm is over 50%, the epoch should be scored W. Unless the posterior dominant rhythm drops by 1 hertz or more. And there and if so, it should be considered low amplitude mixed frequency EEG activity. Another exception is if slow eye movements or vertex are uh, vertex waves are present in the first half of an epoch or the second half of the preceding epoch. In those cases, the page should not be scored W. That is, the epoch should not be scored W. Another situation is when the epoch of a non-alpha producer is occupied by major body movements. In such a case, the presence of a posterior dominant rhythm determines how the epoch should be scored. If any posterior dominant rhythm is present that we have initially used to diagnose wake is present, the epoch should be labeled W. With the same exceptions that we previously mentioned. If, on the other hand, the epoch does not contain any posterior dominant rhythm, then the stage is not W and therefore it has to be N1, N2, N3 or REM stage. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. A duration equal or longer than 0 0.5 seconds is required to classify dash A spindle, B K complex, C slow eye movements, D all of the above. Spindles by definition must last longer than 0 0.5 seconds. This frame shows spindle using regular EEG reading speed of 3 cm per second or 10 seconds per page. And also at the speed of 1 cm per second or 30 seconds per page or computer display. This is the speed used for polysomnography reading most of the time. The slow wave of the K complexes must last more than 0 0.5 seconds. 
vertex wave lasts less than 0.5 seconds. The difference between the duration is often critical to distinguish K-complexes and vertex waves. The rise time, referring to the initial deflection, upwards or downwards, of rapid eye movements, must last equal to or less than 0.5 seconds. The rise time of slow eye movements should last more than 0.5 seconds. Reading eye movements have a relatively slow phase followed by a fast phase. To my knowledge, no numerical value has been attached to any of these phases or components. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. A K complex lasting 600 milliseconds and a peak to peak amplitude of 80 microvolts should be included in the calculation of the proportion of a slow wave sleep in an epoch. A true, B false. By definition, the duration of a K complex is long enough to warrant their designation as a slow sleep wave. And if its voltage is more than 75 microvolt or 75 microvolts, it should be counted as a slow sleep wave and added up for the purpose of scoring the epoch. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. The definition of an arousal includes all of the following except a. An abrupt increase of EEG frequency, alpha, beta, no spindle, or theta, for equal to or more than 3 seconds. B. Its occurrence after 10 seconds of sleep. C. In REM stage, an increase of submental EMG of equal to or more than 1 second. D the presence of K-complexes without slow eye movements. This epoch was preceded by a REM stage epoch, hence by more than 10 seconds of sleep, and followed by another REM stage epoch. It has rapid eye movements in the first half of the epoch and the chin EMG is low except for a phasic increase in tone of about 3 seconds the EG derivations show low amplitude mixed frequency rhythm during most of the epoch interrupted by a 4 second segment of faster activity consisting of a mixture of movement and muscle artifact and cerebral activity in the alpha range. The presence of an increase in the frequency of cerebral activity lasting more than 3 seconds or 3 seconds and an increase in chin EMG lasting more than 1 second defines an arousal during REM stage. The increase in chin EMG is not needed to define an arousal in non-REM stages. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. REM stage should always be continued after an arousal. When the arousal is in the first half of an epoch, if during the rest of the epoch 
the EG remains low amplitude mix frequency and the Shin EMG remains low. A true, B false. A REM sleep epoch can be followed by another REM sleep epoch. But it can also be followed by non-REM sleep epochs. Or a stage W epoch. This is the same epoch I showed you a few minutes ago, as I hope you remember, that the segment after the arousal was labeled REM stage. Thus, this epoch as a whole is a score REM. The rule of the continuation of REM is a little complicated. REM stage should be continued as long as the background consists of low amplitude mid frequency if 1. Shin EMG tone remains low, 2. No slow eye movements appear, and 3. No two consec consecutive spindles or K complexes without arousal are present a space apart by more than 50% of an epoch. This new frame shows a new epoch. The only significant difference is the presence of slow eye movements after the arousal. The presence of slow eye movements, as I hope you remember from a few seconds ago, warrants a state change, which is dictated by the rule of the different stages. An increase Shin EMG either sustained or for more than one second followed by SEMS warrants the segment to be labeled N1. And this segment lasts over 50% of the epoch in this frame. So the epoch should be a score N1. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Please take a look at this epoch and decide if it shows REM to W transition, but it should be a score REM. A REM sleep epoch can be followed by another REM epoch, any sleep non-REM epoch, or a stage W epoch. REM should be discontinued and the epoch score W if high chin ENG, weak behavior or more than 50% of the epoch is occupied by alpha rhythm. This epoch is shared by two stages. REM initially and a stage W after. Since the proportion of REM stage is longer, the epoch should be scored stage REM. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. An epoch should be scored dash if more than 20% of the epoch consists of a slow sleep waves as long as there is no rapid eye movement or high chin EMG. A and 3, B, REM, C and 2, D and 1. As I have mentioned before, any epoch of a polysonogram can be a REM 
Stage Epoch, Any Non Rem, Sleep Stage Epoch, or W Epoch. An epoch where the aggregate of slow sleep waves constitute equal or more than 20% of the epoch warrants the score of N3. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. REM stage should be terminated at the site of the first spindle. A true, B false. Events that terminate REM sleep are background changes characterized by slow sleep wave rhythm compromising more or just 20% of the epoch. By the presence of two consecutive spindle or K complexes without arousal space far enough from each other to occupy 15 seconds of an epoch, or a single spindle or K complex not followed by REM stage. REM can also be terminated by an increase in chin EMG either sustained or for more than one second followed by slow eye movements. Finally, REM can also be terminated by the appearance of high chin EMG, wake behavior or alpha rhythm occupying over 50% of an epoch. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. Which of the following background changes should not make you change stage according to the 2017 recommendations? A. More than 20% of 0.5 to 2 Hz activity with an amplitude above 75 microvolt measured from the central region to the contralateral mastoid from N1. B. More than 50% low amplitude mixed frequency from W. C. More than 50% of alpha rhythm from N1. D. More than 50% of theta with a drop of one or more hertz from W. A polysonogram is read epoch by epoch. Each epoch is 30 seconds. The figure on the left indicates four epochs. The eyes on the first epoch are open and those on the second and subsequent epochs are closed. F stands for frontal to opposite ear or mastoid derivation. C stands for central to opposite ear derivation. O stands for occipital to opposite ear derivation. E1 stand, stands for left eye to ipsilateral ear derivation. E2 stands for right eye to contralateral ear derivation. CH stands for chin to chin derivation. The line after CH indicates low chin muscle tone. The added structure indicates high chin muscle tone in a tonic fashion lasting longer than one second. The line by E1 and E2 reflect potential eye movements. The lines after F, C and O indicates EEG activity. Upon the EEG lines, 
background changes and intermittent elements, that is epoch defining elements will be added. When the EEG lines are thin, they indicate that the background activity is low amplitude mixed frequency. The little hump just introduced indicate that more than 20% of the epoch or at least 20% of the epoch consists of a slow sleep waves, which as you know consists of wave lasting from 500 milliseconds to 2 seconds with an amplitude of more than or just 75 microvolts when measured from the frontal derivation to the contralateral ear. These waves are measured from the frontal derivation because allegedly these slow waves of sleep are largest in the frontal derivation. The wiggly line just added in the occipital derivation indicates that over 50% of the epoch is occupied by alpha rhythm. The step down lines introduced just now indicates that 50% of the posterior dominant rhythm is in the theta range and 1 hertz or more slower than it was initially. So the answer to this question is A. It is so because the amplitude of the slow wave of a sleep activity has to be measured from the frontal and not from the central derivation. Next question. Which of the following graphene must last less than 500 milliseconds a spindles b k complexes c vertex wave d slow eye movements in this frame i am representing a set of five epochs and will now start adding epoch defining grapho elements i will start with k complexes as you can see, K-complexes are represented in the frontal region. And as you remember, the slow component must be must last longer than 500 milliseconds. Sleep spindle must be over 500 milliseconds too, and they are usually represented in the central derivation. Arousal usually are associated with changes in all derivation, changes in chin EMG tone lasting longer than one second are mandatory when scoring an arousal during REM stage. Slow eye movements referring to the deviations in eye channels with an initial deflection of more than half a second. In the same channels I have added rapid eye movements, which include those with an initial deflection of less than half a second. And also I have now added vertex waves. They are being represented in the central derivations. They have a duration of less than 500 milliseconds. Last element I will represent is major body movement. Major body movements usually involve all the channels, but they are defined by their effect on EEG channel only. A major body movement implies that for more than half an epoch, body movements and muscle artifacts obscure the epoch. 
So the answer to this question is C. Next question. An epoch with major body movements is always scored as the next epoch. And for the purpose of labeling the next epoch, major body movements should be considered as an arousal without slow eye movements. A true, B false. A major body movement with any amount of alpha rhythm or the assigned posterior dominant rhythm is scored W. Otherwise, any epoch with major body movement should be scored as the next epoch and for the purpose of labeling the next epoch it should be considered as an arousal with no slow eye movements. So the answer to this question is false. It is false because of the word always. Next question. Which of the following is not an option when the majority of an epoch is characterized by low amplitude mixed frequency EEG pattern? A. N1 B. REM, C, N2, D, N3. Background activity are consistent with certain sleep stages. More than 50% low amplitude mixed frequency, e.g. pattern, occurs in N1, N2, REM, and weak stage. An EEG background with more than 50% of alpha rhythm or of the designated posterior dominant rhythm, which is usually in the theta range in young children and not alpha producing adults is present in a stage W. A background activity with more than 20% of a slow wave of a sleep is always N3, but remember that pathological slow waves must be excluded from this tabulation. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. How should an epoch characterized by low amplitude mixed frequency, e.g. background, eye blinking, and rapid eye movement associated with normal chin muscle tone be scored? A, N1, B, REM, C, N2, D, W. We alluded at the beginning of this talk to keeping score. And we said that there are two types of epochs. Ambiguous when not all elements needed to score an epoch are found within the epoch being scored and unambiguous, when all elements to score an epoch are present within the epoch being scored. And so can be with wakefulness. Unambiguous wakefulness is usually present at the time the study is started, but may also appear after the patient has fallen asleep. Wakefulness should be scored if more than 50% of an epoch is occupied by alpha rhythm, eye blinking, rapid eye movements associated with normal or high chin muscle tone, or reading eye movements. 
Reading eye movements consist of an initial slow deflection as the words in each line are being read, followed by a second rapid phase as a saccadic eye movement returns to the first word of the next line. You can appreciate this characteristic in this frame looking at the derivations labeled E1 and E2. W must also be scored in an epoch if the EG during this epoch is low amplitude mixed frequency activity during which there is no defining features and is preceded by a W epoch and not abutting a REM stage epoch. In this case, we refer to an ambiguous wakefulness. So the answer to this question is W. Next question. An epoch with the patient asleep, low amplitude mixed frequencies, and low shin EMG is labeled REM only if rapid eye movements are within the first 50% of the epoch or in the second 50% of the prior epoch. A true, B false. Most graphemes alter the score of an epoch when they are within the first 50% of the epoch in question or in the second 50% of the prior epoch. Rapid eye movements during sleep are special. Rapid eye movements influence the epoch they are in backwards and forward. This is a unique attribute among graphemes. So regardless of their position in an epoch, they will dominate the epoch in which they are found bearing special circumstances. I will first tell you about the dominance part and later about those restraining special circumstances. As you can see in this frame, the ability of rapid eye movements to influence back and forth give rapid eye movements an advantage over a spindle, which like most graphene only influences the segment in front of them. Please notice the different color arrows in this frame. But in addition, when rapid eye movements and a spindle are in equal footing in an epoch, the so-called conflicting epochs, rapid eye movements win. In this frame, the duration of the segments influenced by REM and a spindle is the same. And as you can see, the epoch should be scored REM. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. Which of the following epochs should not be labeled REM? In the case of the epoch label A, as you can see, the progression of REM backwards is not halted by the first arousal. In the epoch label B, K complexes, which could also have been spindles since they both have the same implication, are about 20% apart. Thus, the distance between the K complexes is too small to stop the spread of REM. In the epoch label C, the segment from one end to the other end of the epoch would be tag REM, since an arousal does not stop the backward spread of REM sleep. But certain or uncertainty regarding the scoring of this page must remain because the stage of the epoch preceding this epoch is not known. If a spindle would be present, then the segment of the epoch between the spindles would be tagged N2 
and the segment between the spindle and the arousal will most likely be also scored N2. Those tagging the majority of the epoch N2 and requiring us to score it as N2. Yet, since in this case, that epoch or the, the epoch prior to the one that we are evaluating is not there, with information that we have, the best possible scoring is REM stage. In epoch D, the interval between the 2K complexes is larger than 50% of the epoch, thus meeting the criteria for N2 and prompting the scoring of this epoch as N2. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. Look at this frame and select the best answer for the indicated epoch. A, N1, REM, and N2, B, REM, and N2, C, REM, D, N2. Since the segment of a stage 2 in this epoch is longer than 50% of the epoch, the segment should be labeled in two. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. Please look at this frame and select the best answer for the indicated epoch. A, N1, REM, N2, and W. B, N1, REM, and N2, C, N2, and REM, D, N2. The scoring of this epoch will be dependent on the subsequent epoch. If the first grapheme encounter going forward is a spindle or a K-complex with no arousal, the epoch should be scored into. On the other hand, if any other element but a K-complex without arousal or a spindle is present in the subsequent epoch, then the scoring would be different. In this case, for example, if the graphing consists of rapid eye movements or any other epoch-defining element but K complex without arousal or a spindle, the epoch would be score REM stage. So in this case, where we do not know what the, ne the next epoch is going to bring, the best answer is C. Next question. Take a look at this frame and Choose the best answer. A, N1, B, REM, C, N2, D, N3. The first third should be tagged N2. Since spindles are present. As well as a K-complex. The rest should be score R since the Shin EMG is low and rapid eye movements are present. Another grapho element present in this frame is SOTO waves, which you can see on the EEG derivation at the very beginning of the 
REM stage just slightly before the repetitive rapid eye movements. So the epoch should be scored REM stage based on the fact that my, the majority of it consists of REM sleep. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. In a tracing with a posterior dominant rhythm consisting of activity between 4 and 7 Hz, you should score an epoch stage dash if the epoch has no K complexes, a spindle, or rapid eye movements, and the posterior dominant rhythm drops 1 or more Hz. A, N1, B, REM, C, N2, D, N3. A low amplitude mix frequency dominated epoch can be seen in any stage of sleep. So, when confronted with such an EG background, I like to start by using an elimination process. This process first considers making sure that less than 20% of the background activity does not consist of a slow sleep waves. This eliminates the possibility of entry. That is, if they are present, they eliminate the possibility of entry. Next, I consider the possibility of REM, which can be eliminated if Gini NB is high which in this question is. So REM is also eliminated in this case. Then I consider the absence of K complexes and a spindle, which do not exclude the possibility of N2, but makes it unlikely. Next I consider stage W. Low Amplitude make frequency can be the posterior dominant rhythm in non alpha producer or children during a wakefulness, so this possibility cannot be excluded. Next, I consider a stage N1. The fact that there is a drop of 1 Hz make this possibility most likely. So the answer to this question is. A. Next question. Please take a look at this panel and label the epoch with the question mark. The possible answers are A, W, B, N1, C, N2, D, N3. The epoch in question is an unambiguous epoch because it can be scored based on the elements found within the same epoch. The epoch in question has a high chin EMG tone, rapid eye movements, the eyes are open, and the EEG activity consists of low voltage mixed frequencies. So the answer to this question is A. Next question, which of the following does not warrant a change to a stage N1 from W? A, a drop of 2 Hz in the alpha rhythm. B, a vertex wave in the first 50% of an epoch with low amplitude mid frequency background. C, a vertex wave in the second 50% of the prior epoch in low amplitude mixed frequency background in the epoch in question, D, a uh, slow eye movement in the first 50% of an epoch with low amplitude mixed frequency background. A stage W should be continued if 
a low amplitude mix frequency activity persist in conjunction with high shin EMG and or a weak behavior. It should also be continued if alpha rhythm is present over 50% of the epoch. Or if low amplitude MIF frequency activity is present without epoch defining features and not aboting REM stage. Going from W to N1 is triggered by alpha rhythm occupying less than 50% of an epoch by low amplitude mix frequency dropping 1 Hz or more in frequency for more than 50% of the epoch in question by the appearance of, of vertex waves in the first 50% of an epoch or second 50% of the prior epoch by the presence of slow eye movements dominated epoch or in children by the presence of hypnagogic hypersynchrony occupying more than 50% of an epoch. In this frame, the first third is tag W and the other two third and one by virtue of the presence of slow eye movements. So the epoch would be score stage N1. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Please take a look at this panel and label the epoch with the question mark. The possible answers are A, W, B, N1, C, N2, D, N3, E, R. This epoch is an ambiguous epoch because itself does not have enough epoch defining elements to be scored. This epoch can be itemized as having low shin EMG and no defining features. The background activity is low amplitude mix frequency. Remember that an element, in this case low eye movements, are present in the second 50% of the epoch. And remember that only when they are in the first 50% of the epoch they count for the epoch that is being eva evaluated. In this case, since it is in the second 50% of the epoch, it will count for the next epoch, but not for the epoch it is at. EEG, as we previously mentioned, show low voltage mixed frequency. We know that the ongoing epoch is W and that the epoch that we are considering is ambiguous. And we also know that W epoch followed by low amplitude make frequency without epic epoch defining features and not aboting REM is consistent with continuation of stage W. So the answer to this question is W. Next question. Please take a look at this panel and label the epoch with a question mark. A, W, B, N1, C, N2, D, N3, E, R. This is an unambiguous epoch, consistent with stage W, because 
over 50% of the epoch is made of alpha rhythm. So the answer to this question is W. Next question. Please look at this panel and choose the best answer. A, N2 to REM, B, W to REM, C, W, T, N1 to REM. The Shin EMG initially shows high sustained tonic activity. In the last third, it shows absence of tonic activity in the Shin EMG, and it also shows few phasic bursts in the same derivation. This activity that is the burst of phasic Shin EMG activity coincided with the appearance of rapid eye movements. This is consistent with tagging of the last third of the epoch as REM stage. REM onset sleep may occur with narcolepsy, certain drugs, and in patients with sleep apnea. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Please take a look at this panel and label the epoch with a question mark. We're dealing with an onabicus epoch because of the presence of an epoch-defining element in the second half of the prior epoch, in this case, slow eye movements. So since the background consists of low amplitude mixed frequency in over 50% of the epoch with less than 20% of a slow sleep wave activity, and this is happening, as previously mentioned, with the slow eye movements in the second half of the prior epoch. Shin EMG is low, and the ongoing activity is W, following the rules that we previously mentioned. The new rhythm should be labeled N1 because of the slow eye movement activity in the last 50% of the prior epoch. So the answer to this question is B. Next question, what stage would you assign to this epoch? A, N1, B, REM, C, W, T, N2. Since most of the epoch is tagged W and only the last third is tagged REM, the epoch should be scored as a stage W. It is important to stress that REM stage cannot coincide with high Shin EMG tone, that is, sustained tone, phasic increasing tone less than one second can be seen in patients with uh, in patients during REM stage sleep. So the answer to this question is. C. Next question. Which of the following situations warrants to stop scoring N1? A. An arousal with continuation of low amplitude mixed frequency. B. 
a major body movement followed by an epoch with a spindle in the second 50% of the epoch? C. A, a major body movement followed by an epoch with rapid eye movements in the second 50% of the epoch? D. A major body movement followed by an epoch with a K-complex within with an arousal in the first 50% of the epoch. In the next few frames, I will create a scenario for each of the possibility I have just mentioned. Answer A presents an arousal with continuation of low amplitude mixed frequency. This require no stage change. Answer B presents a major body movement followed by an epoch with a spindle in the second 50% of that epoch. This eventuality does not warrant state changes from N1. Answer C presents a scenario of a major body movement followed by an epoch with REM in the second 50% of the epoch. The epoch in question does require a state change to REM. and also triggers a change in the scoring of the major body movement epoch which needs to be changed also to REM. Answer D presents a scenario of a major body movement followed by an epoch with a K complex with an arousal. This situation does not require a state change. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. Within an ongoing REM stage, the presence of a slow eye movements in the first half of the next epoch stops the progression of REM stage even in the absence of any other changes. A true, B false. The panel indicated by the arrow shows that major body movements do not stop the forward spreading of REM stage. The panel shown by the arrow demonstrates that slow eye movements on their own do not stop the forward spread of REM. The arrow now indicates to the third panel and you can see that a major body movement in conjunction with the slow eye movements stops the forward spread of REM. The panel now indicated by the arrow shows that slow eye movement stop the backward spreading of REM. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. An epoch with high chin ENG tone cannot be scored into A true B. False. This frame represents an unambiguous N2. Shading in yellow is a vertex wave and in magenta a K complex. A long spindle is shaded in green at the end of the epoch. The epoch is a score N2 despite high chin EMG tone. This frame shows a segment of a polysomnogram corresponding to N2. You can appreciate 
that the spindle and K complex present in this epoch. Sheen EMG is also high, that is tonic sheen EMG is high. So the answer to this question is false. Next question, an arousal does not stop the forward progression of REM stage, but an arousal with a slow eye movements does. A true, B false. This panel portrays the effect of an arousal on REM, which as you can see, by looking at the epoch pointed by the arrow, it is none. This epoch continues to be REM despite the presence of an arousal in the first half of the epoch. And so is the next epoch. In this new figure, the one pointed by the arrow, you can see the impact of an arousal followed by a slow eye movements. REM is halted and an N1 stage emerges. An epoch dominated by an arousal is always an N1 if it is associated with slow eye movements. An arousal, same as a spindle, dominates an epoch if it is found in the second 50% of the prior epoch or in the first 50% of the epoch in question. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. A K-complex without an arousal in the first 50% of an epoch warrants scoring that epoch as N2 as long as the background activity remains low amplitude mixed frequency. A true, B false. Notice that in the panel pointed by the arrow there is a K complex and chin muscle tone is increased, thus warranting it to be scored as N2. In this new panel, the epoch pointed by the arrow is scored with a question mark because the scoring of this epoch will be influenced by the score of the next epoch. If the next epoch is a score R, then the epoch with the arrow should be also score R. If, on the other hand, the next epoch, epoch is a score in 1, then the epoch with the arrow should be a score in 2. In the next example, uh, I am representing the presence of more than 20% of a slow wave of a sleep, in which case that epoch will have to be labeled N3. And the epoch with the arrow will have to be label N2. If, on the other hand, the next epoch to the one with the arrow is labeled N2 because of the presence of a K-complex without arousal or spindle, then that epoch should be scored N2. That is, the epoch with the arrow should be scored N2. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. An arousal and a K-complex with an arousal in the first 50% of an epoch warrants scoring 
the epoch as N1 if it is preceded and followed by an epoch scored N2. A true, B false. You can see in this panel that the epoch indicated by the arrow is scored N1, indicating that an arousal ends in true progression. In this new panel, a K complex within an arousal is present. In the epoch indicated by the arrow, and the stage is still remain in one. So, as you can see, for practical purpose, an arousal and a K complex with an arousal behave in the same way. and therefore they should be considered for scoring purpose the same element. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. An epoch with a major body movement without alpha rhythm is equivalent to an arousal when the ongoing epoch is N2. A true, B false. A major body movement in an epoch does not warrant a change in that epoch when the ongoing activity is N2. An arousal in the first 50% of an epoch warrants scoring the epoch a stage N1 if the ongoing epoch previously was N2. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. An epoch with major body movements without alpha rhythm followed by a slow eye movements is equivalent to an arousal when the ongoing epoch is N2. A true, B false. We already know that an arousal stops N2 and warrants the changing of that epoch to N1. A major body movement followed by a slow eye movement has the same effect. The answer to this question is true. Next question. If alpha rhythm is present for part of an epoch occupied by a major body movement, the epoch should be scored W. A true, B false. As you recall, a major body movement do not halt the progression of REM, as you can see in this frame indicated by the arrow. Yet a major body movement intermix with alpha activity as it presented in this frame does warrant the change in the ongoing rhythm even in the case of the ongoing rhythm being REM sleep. So an epoch with body, major body ch changes in alpha rhythm should always be scored W. So the answer to this question is True. Next question. How should an epoch be scored when alpha rhythm occupies more than 50% of the epoch and slower movements are also present in the first half of the epoch? A and 1, B, W, C and 2, D and 3. An epoch with alpha rhythm for more than 50% 
of the epoch and slow eye movements should be scored wakefulness. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. The terminology recommended by the AASM for staging neonatal sleep is the same as the one used by most neurophysiologists. A true, B false. The nomenclature presented in this frame is the one most often used by neurophysiologists. I hope that you recognize it from prior videos. The recommended classification of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine for infants is somewhat different. A week is called week and represented with a W. Active sleep is called REM sleep. Quiet sleep is called N for non-REM sleep. And indeterminate sleep is labeled transitional sleep and indicated by the letter T. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Which of the following terms is not used by the AASM? A. Trace alternate, B. Activité majeure, C. High voltage slow wave, D. Mixed activity. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine do not use the term activité majeure. For the definition, this academy uses C. Next question. Which of the following is not true regarding infant polysomnograms? A. REM is the first sleep stage encounter until two to three months of legal age. B. Breathing is most reliable parameter to distinguish N sleep from R sleep. C. All waves should be included for EG recording. D. High voltage slow activity has an occipital or central predominance. Pathological waves should not be used for scoring. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. How would you score this segment? A. Wake, B. REM, C. Non-REM, D. Transitional. Wake is most reliably scored by behavioral observation up until two months of age. So, if the eyes are open, the epoch should be scored a week. So the answer is A. Next question. Which of the following elements is first present during infancy? A. Spindles. B. K. Complexes. C. Vertex. Waves. D. Hypnopompic hypersynchronization. Spindles are first present from six weeks to three months. And please remember that to call a spindle during polysomnographic scoring, 
the spindle must last more than 0 0.5 seconds. K complexes are usually seen for the first time between 3 and 6 months. In vertex sharp waves are usually present from 4 to 6 months. All these mm, ages have been given in neonates that have been born full term. I will use this chart to show you the frequency changes that occurred through life with the posterior dominant rhythm. At three months, most posterior dominant rhythm that we see is in the range of 4 Hz. By six months, the posterior dominant rhythm predominant frequency is 6 Hz. By three years, 8 to 9 Hz. By nine years, 9 Hz. By 15 years, 10 Hz. Hypnagogic hypersynchronization appears between 3 and 6 months in babies born at term. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Which of the following elements is not used as a criteria to start scoring an epoch stage N1 in children with no alpha rhythm? A. Hypnagogic hypersynchrony. B. Diffuse high amplitude rhythmic 3 to 5 Hz activity. C. Occipital predominant high amplitude rhythmic 3 to 5 Hz activity. D. Hypnopompic hypersynchrony. The terms agogos and pompi are unusual. The term hypnagogic is used for what happens when going from awake to sleep. The term hypnopompic is used for what happens when going from asleep to awake. The scoring of N1 from a week in a not alpha producing patient should be done when theta activity slows down or if a slow eye movements or vertex waves appear in the first 50% of an epoch. When hypnagogic hypersynchrony appears, the score should also change to N1 in children. This hypnagogic hypersynchrony, as I'm sure you know, consists of diffuse high amplitude rhythmic activity in the 3 to 5 Hz range. At times, instead of being diffuse, this activity may be predominant over the occipital areas. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. Which of the following is not a benign movement phenomenon during sleep? A. Alternating leg muscle action. B. Hypnagogic foot tremor, C. Excessive fragmentary myoclonus, D. REM sleep behavior disorder. Benign movements during sleep includes alternating leg muscle action, hypnagogic foot tremor, excessive fragmentary myoclonus. Pathological 
movements during a sleep include REM sleep behavior disorders. So the answer to this question is D. Thank you.